Yo, what is going on my dudes? Welcome to the video. Today we're going to be re reviewing top peace control clips from pro controller players and we're going to break down what they're exactly doing, how you guys can apply to your own game, and how you guys yourselves can become absolute peace control gods using these clips. What we're going to do is we're going to go over three different types of peace control. We're going to go over how to gain peace control when you're fighting somebody who is above you in a build fight. We're going to talk about how to gain peace control of somebody who's below you and then how you can gain peace control on somebody when they're boxed up. I think there's a really good video and I really think it's going to help you guys out. If you guys do find it enjoyable and it helps you out in your game, make sure you smack a like on it. Hit that sub button if you guys are new and let me know who you think the best peace controller in the game is in the comments down below. So the first controller pro we're gonna be reviewing their clips of is Reet, who I've talked about before on this channel. He's absolutely insane. But what makes these tr these clips so special, in my opinion, is this is in the box fighting championship. So Reed is not just doing this against average Joe Schmoes. He's doing this against Faceway, Yoldi, like phase dubs, unknown, literally players who are at the top of the game right now in Fortnite. And it just showcases that when you have great peace control, you can dumpster a player of literally any caliber. So right here in this clip, this is a great demonstration of how to gain peace control with a simple, simple method of using a high wall when you know a player is like one or two levels or floors above you. And Reed does this extremely well. So in this clip, Reed is just like looking around this area. He knows there's a player somewhere underneath him and he's looking to get a peek on them. What he doesn't know is that this player is actually going out of zone uh, to gain high ground. So the player sacrifices health to get to jump out, get a chance at getting height from Reed. It's not a bad play in the slightest, and Reed just doesn't see it coming. But watch how he adjusts as a response to it. So Reed is chilling, looking for it, sees the player building up over here. Now what he's going to do to block this player off as they come in is he's going to go for what's called a high wall retake. And so he's going to throw a wall while jumping as high as he can possibly go to shut this player off. He knows that the player is running up like this ramp, so he knows, okay, if I get a wall right above that, I can shut him off, which is exactly what he pulls out. So, jumps up high wall, lands on the floor in a ramp, and there is that player, just like we predicted, is ready right there. So what this player is going to do, he's stuffed off right now, he's going to go to the left, and Reed, again, because his brain is literally swollen, it's so huge, um, is going to read that and cut it off and establish peace control over there as well. He hits the edit. There goes the player, blocks him off, shoots him in the back of the dome for the 140 and absolutely cleans up. So if you are going for a player who is a floor above you, getting that wall in front of them can be such a good way to stuff them. And you've got to try it out. I would try it out in creative first because you'll be mind blown how high you can throw that wall above you. And then you can just easily use that. Whether or not you want to like stuff the player off, we just back it up for a second. You know, if this player doesn't have this floor or this ramp, sorry, above them, you know, read in this situation, maybe he could like throw a pyramid above the player as well. He could edit a window right here and then throw the, the pyramid through and get more peaks control that way. In this situation where the player is already somewhat control over the box, he knows he's just going to make that edit out, completely shut him off and get the bop in the back of the head. And it's a clean, clean play, dude. Now, this next clip is against the controller GOAT, Space Sway. So right now, Reed reads this player, and this is a great way you can establish peace control over a player that is below you. And what he does is he uses double, like, double floor and pyramid tarping, but he doesn't just spray it everywhere, because anybody can just grab their controller and go, ah, and launch pyramids and floors all over the place. What really makes it good is if you can actually read the player, read where the player is moving, and then use that to shut them off and shut the door on them. So right now, Reed can see and hear Faceway is moving like kind of left to right underneath him through these builds. So what Reed does is he moves to this box right here and places the floor in the pyramid before Sway even has the opportunity to get there. And it works perfectly. So here we go. He reads the play. He sees Sway is going over this way. Pyramid, floor, double edits, gets the bop in on him, hits a nice clean 130 shot. But right there, let's back it up for one second, because as Reed takes the shot, not only is he looking at the player and taking the shot, he's assessing his next options. So he sees Sway is looking this way, looking back at him, and he also sees that there's no wall right there. So he knows that because of that, once he makes this edit, once he closes this floor back up, Sway is like pretty much guaranteed going to be heading that way. Sway's already looking at the direction. There's no wall there. So what 
he's going to do, what Reed is going to do is once he closes this floor up, he's going to also move to lay a pyramid and a, a ramp, or sorry, a pyramid and a floor in this direction. And it's exactly what he does. So gets the bop, closes it up, then looks to, again, just claim peace control all over again. And in this situation, he knows he has sway lit, so he can jump into the box and get a guaranteed body shot finish on him and just cleans up beautifully while, like, basically taking incredibly good peace control while being on height. Now, another amazing pro-tier controller player who I'm absolutely loving to watch lately is Slight, and it's, again, got to do with how good his peace control is. Now, this clip you guys are about to see, there's, like, literally five different things that Slight does in this clip that's amazing, and it's a three-second like a three -second clip, but I'm just going to give it to you guys in full speed, and then we're going to break down into every individual part and how you guys can apply that to your game to just dominate with your peace control, whether or not your keyboard or mouse or controller. This will all work incredibly good for you, so just watch this. That's disgusting, dude. That is disgusting. All right, so here's what we do. We're going to have a bunch of things you can take away from this quick clip. It's all going to do with how you can build defensively, how you can set yourself up as well as possible for going for that peace control. Um, there's a bunch of takeaways from this clip. So number one, watch what he does right here. One thing you should never do is just jump down onto a single ramp when you're trying to obtain peace control on your opponent. Because what happens is the player can like throw out a pyramid above your head. It makes you super, super predictable. You should always do what Slight does right here is lay of multiple ramps. He's going to lay a ramp there and lay a ramp there. That way the peer, like the player who's in the box who you are pressuring so hard, they don't really know what you're going to do and where you're going. So he does that. Now he's going to go down and basically try to take the play. He hits one pickaxe and then grabs the floor. And notice what he does right here. He grabs the floor and puts a ramp above his head. So in one slick, super good looking move, he's made it so that he's made this wooden wall one hit and he set himself up so that he can try to go for a phasing move on this player. But what he does right here is instead of building the wall when he goes for the jump shot, like pickaxe swing, which is basically the best way to phase into a box right now, um, if you don't have a shockwave or a crash pad, what he does is he instead tries to lay the, the, the ramp first. And watch what happens when he does that. When he goes to lay the ramp, he still gets held out of the box, but he now has a ramp inside this box. So he knows that this player is pressured. He also can see that this player is now looking this way. You can see that basically looking at where the shape of the player is. Let's just draw him right here. Chilling. And then you can see where the blueprint is. So that's a good way, if you're trying to track a player through builds, figuring out what direction that player is headed. Is look for the blueprints and the silhouette of their body. The blueprints are going to glow like a lot not necessarily glow, but be a lot more visible. And you can use that as your way to read what your opponent is going to do next. So now, based on this new knowledge that, that Slight has, he's going to read him going right, places the, the wall first. You would think a pyramid first, but because he can hit that edit so damn quick, he places the, the wall that prevents the player from being able to turn and get a shot on him, go, like going for like a left side peek. Then he's also able to stuff the player off. The player literally is panicking at this point, and you can tell because he's laying this ramp out because he has no peace control whatsoever. He's just trying to get anything out to block a shot, and clearly it's not working in the slightest at this point. So now he's going to get a bop, and Slight is going to back into the right side peak a little bit just to prevent himself from getting damaged. He's going to stuff the back wall so this player has absolutely no chance and just dumpsters uh, NA West player. Literally so many great things in one single clip right there. All right, so again, we got a slight clip, and I'm showing you guys this one. This is back to the first tip we talked about, which is gaining peace control on somebody above you. Slight does the same thing that Reed does in this clip, which is gaining the high wall on your opponent. And right here, this is the player right here. So he's going to place, you can see again, the player is moving to the left. They're moving this way along the builds. So he's going to place the high wall like right here. Uh, in front of him, but he does something different than Reet does. Because Slight is slightly under the player, he's not running up or, or tracking up towards the player. Instead, he's going to use the high wall and then edit the high wall to gain more peace control. And you guys are going to see exactly what I'm talking about right here. So he jumps up, goes for the shot, places the high wall defensively, then he's going to hit this edit, but instead of just going immediately for the shot, and look at this dude, look look at this dude, what is he doing, man? He's gonna go for the pyramid placement above him, 
cleans up the peace control. This guy, in a panic, is going to probably try to jump around. He might try to jump up onto a floor. But because Slight has this pyramid right here, he's going to be completely stuck and, and choked off. And then Slight can hit a jump shot, get a peek, and... Unfortunately, the game only gave him 44 damage for a headshot right there, but be it's enough to get the kill because Slight already has him lit. So it's just another way, if you guys want to use that high wall technique, you don't necessarily have to run up to the high wall. You can edit it and then establish peace control through it, if that makes sense. Just another incredibly, incredibly good 200 IQ play from Slight, man. The guy is so good at this game. Hope you guys enjoyed the video today and found it helpful. If you guys did, let me know in the comments what you guys would like to see from me next. What kind of tips and tricks and breakdown videos would you like to see in the future? Also, if you guys really want to help me out, drop a like on the video. Also, feel free to drop a sub and make sure you sub to the boys we, we talked about in this video. I'm going to drop Reet and Slight's channels down below. They're two absolutely insanely skilled players and I love watching them play Fortnite. I feel like there's so much to learn by watching those players. Thank you guys so much. And have a great day.